Okay, so today I am going to show you how to get a uh, base chain uh, airdrop if they do one. Um, now it is important to note with all the airdrops there is never a guarantee that they're actually going to drop. Uh, however, historically the layer twos typically have and as you can see here, uh, Coinbase has a market cap of $33.77 billion. Um, and base chain is Coinbase's official chain. So the odds that they do an airdrop at some point are actually quite high. Uh, they have the money and uh, they definitely have the desire to get more people using their chain. Um, and an airdrop is a really good way to do that. Now, based off of previous airdrops like Optimism and Arbitrum, it's very. Uh, very likely that the top wallets, um, that's top uh, probably about 10% of wallets, will end up getting airdrops between $10,000 and $30,000. And I am going to show you today how to get in those top percentages uh, using just 0.1 ETH. Um, so about uh, a little less than $300 right now. And you can secure a spot so that if they launch a coin, um, you're uh, almost guaranteed to get a ten thousand to thirty thousand dollar airdrop. Uh, the first step to doing this is actually to create a MetaMask uh, wallet, and in order to do that, just Google search MetaMask, and here's the MetaMask website. So you will go there and then hit download. And I am using Firefox right now, which I normally don't use, but I'm gonna just do it to install a uh, new MetaMask. So we'll add this extension. It's added on as an extension, and it'll say, let's get started. So I'll just say, agree, create an existing wallet. It'll tell you that, say, I agree. Make yourself a password. And then confirm that password. And then hit I understand, create a new wallet. Now, uh, normally what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to secure your wallet. But I am not going to do that in this video because it would show my recovery, my seed phrase. Um, so I will secure my wallet later. If you, if you uh, don't secure it immediately, then it will let you do so later. Um, it's just going to tell you uh, that um, they can't recover your seed phrase, and if you lose it, then you're basically screwed. Um, so, that's fine. And then click on there. Okay. And so, this is a brand new MetaMask wallet. What we're going to do is... Normally, uh, you would normally you would send Ethereum from a ex from an exchange to this MetaMask wallet, but I am going to send it from another MetaMask wallet to that MetaMask wallet. So I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to put maximum. So we're going to send a little under a little under 0.1 ETH, and we're sending that now. So then we will wait for that to come in over here on this end, which shouldn't take very long. Ethereum's not that, uh, that slow. And then we'll, we'll get to the good part, which will, there we go. Uh, and now it's telling me to back it up. It's going to give you that message until you do uh, end up backing it up, but that's fine. Um, and so, uh there's multiple ways to bridge uh one way you could bridge to base directly within metamask um so metamask has an ethereum to base bridge uh however the metamask ethereum to base bridge uh, is a little bit more expensive and so what i actually recommend is going to rhino like rhinoceros dot phi and this is actually what Coinbase recommends as well. It's going to Rhino Phi Bridge, and uh, and I'll put this uh, I'll put this bridge in the comments so that you don't have to remember the URL. Um, but we're going to use this website for a couple different things. Um, the first thing, actually, let's do 
before we even get into um, before we even get into bridging, let let's just show uh, for the record. Um, we will show that uh, this wallet has no ranking. So yeah, no activity found. So I'm not uh, I'm not tricking you guys. I'm not starting off with a wallet somehow that uh, has activity and is highly ranked. Um, but if you go to trackers, this is how you will track your, uh, if you're doing other airdrops like Linea, Scroll, ZK Sync, uh, or Base, or Polygon EVM, or Manta Pacific, although I don't recommend doing Manta Pacific because uh, I believe the window for that one is over. Um, but this will tell you, and I'll show you in a little bit what it'll show you. Um, so what we're going to do is go over to the bridge option, which is over here. And we are going to connect our wallet and you're going to hit MetaMask. And then we're going to connect to that MetaMask right there. You have to authenticate your wallet, which will make you sign a request. Um, and then you will have to sign again enable layer 2 access and so then we will click on ethereum because that's the token that we're trying to transfer and then right here we will have it'll uh, pop up ethereum and right here we will put base because we're transferring it over to base and uh, for purposes today I want to transfer the maximum so then it'll tell you how much you're going to receive and then you hit bridge and you're going to have to prove it in your wallet, of, of course. Um, might have to. Okay, well, it's having a problem with gas. So if it has a problem with gas, then what you do is you hit reject. And it'll go back, and then you try again. And you basically just lower this a little bit. So 0 0.092. Uh, let's say... Okay, so then it's readjusting for uh, for that, and then now we have enough gas. So now we hit confirm. And there we go. Oh, it confirmed the transaction on Etherscan, and now it's got this little thing. So it's uh, showing you that it is trying to is in the process of bridging over to base. And so while we're waiting for it to bridge over to base, we're going to go to the next step. And the next step is to go to chainlist.org. Chainlist.org, and then type in base. And then base is right here. So then you're going to connect your MetaMask, and you're going to install uh, the base chain. Don't worry about any of these warnings right here. Uh, chain list is very, uh, very um, reputable. But that will allow you to go ahead and base on the list. Uh, it still hasn't, uh, yeah, so it still hasn't gone through yet, the transfer. Oh, now it just went through, it said. So we should have... Very well. Wow. It's really quite weird. We're going to try something else. We're going to try going add base to MetaMask. Okay. 
so we are just going to add it manually. Oh, there's got to be a better way. Yeah, it should be. Okay, let's set this one. So maybe it was just the wrong base. So just find another another instance of base on chain list. Uh, if that happens, find one that has two. Um, two green things and hit add to metamask because i bet you if we go now now our now our ethereum shows up so it's just a problem with the llama nose one i don't know why it defaulted to that um but if uh if you have that issue then just uh scroll down here and find one that has two greens and hit add to metamask and um it'll be all good so you hit this button to do that and then uh Hit that button to go back. So now we've just successfully bridged to base uh, from Ethereum and uh, for Rhino Fi. Now, if we go to the tracker, we should already have. So we're in the top 100% because we don't have any transactions or anything. Now, when it comes to airdrops, there there are three different criteria that they look for. Um, criteria number one is age. Age is something you can't do anything about, but the earlier you get started, the better. Uh, so that once the airdrop does come, your wallet is as old as it could have been uh, when you started. Uh, the second is value, and so that's right here. And the third is interactions, and that's the number of different contracts that are interacted with. Now, this uh, guide is going to show you how to take point uh, a little point oh nine eighth and get into the top percentiles as far as wallets go uh, by increasing the volume and increasing the number of interactions through uh, very simple means. So what we're going to do is we are going to uh, we'll just keep this open. But we're going to go to this guide, uh, which I will also post in the uh, comments section. And what this guide has is it has uh, about 50 to 60 different uh, NFTs. And all of them are uh, under a dollar with gas included. And they count for contract interactions. So each NFT is a contract interaction. So by the time you're done minting all of these, which I'm going to do, then uh, your wallet's already uh, pretty good for contract interactions. So you only need to mint one. So you hit one, then you hit MetaMask, and next, connect, and then you're going to hit mint. And as you'll see, the uh, NFT is 52 cents. That's not much. And the gas on base is actually less than a penny. So it says zero dollars. And then it'll go minting. And then it's confirmed. So uh, you now own one NFT from that collection. All right. And so then we're going to go back again and go to the next one. Do the same thing, connect wallet, MetaMask. We're going to confirm. And that is confirmed. So we have that NFT as well. And then we just go back and we just keep going down the list. And we are, going to, we are going to mint one of all of these NFTs. They're only 52 cents. Uh, so um, you're going to spend about 25 to $30 doing this. But it will give you 50 to 60 contract interactions. So it will definitely be worth it.
um, and this is the first step. Uh, they're all they're all funny memes. Um, some of them are a little bit uh, offensive, I found, but hey, uh, whatever whatever works. So we're gonna hit next, next. And I am going to mint the rest of them just so I can show you what that does to your wallet uh, on the activity tracker. But I am going to cut right here and, uh, and then come back after I'm done minting them all. So uh, I just finished, uh, just finished minting all of these NFTs uh, on base. And uh, so I also minted three supporter pins from NFTs to me. Um, that's not quite necessary, uh, but I just did it for the hell of it. Um, those were those three supporter pins were about as much money as all of these other NFTs combined. Um, but NFTs to me will be doing an airdrop. They have confirmed that they will be doing an airdrop, and so I think the supporter pins may have something to do with the airdrop. I do know for sure that the, or they do say for sure that the supporter pins will give some extra benefits. Um, so they don't, they don't say what those are, but either way, uh, that's, uh, that's up to you whether you want to, uh, do the supporter pins or not. But now that we've minted all these NFTs, let's go ahead and refresh our activity tracker on rhino.fi. Find our score, and we're now in the top 21%. So uh, that was 77 interactions. Um, so there were 74 NFTs uh, in in there. Um, 74 NFTs, and then the three supporter pins. We spent probably less than two pennies in fees. And the volume of all of that was 0 0.0229. Um, about half of that was the supporter pins again. Um, 74 times 50 cents. Um, that would be, let's see here. What's half of 74? Or 52 cents, so it was 38.48, so just under $40 in NFTs uh, without the supporter pins. Um, with the supporter pins, it was 0 0.0229 ETH, but we still have 0 0.0674 ETH left. And I'm going to show you what to do with that to get a better score here. Now, the top 21% is still pretty good. Um, it's because we did all of these interactions. That's why it's very important to mint all of the NFTs um, because interact, because now we're at the point where we don't have to go searching for a whole bunch of different contracts to interact with in order to get our interaction score up to where the maximum is going to need to be for the top uh, amount of airdrop. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to, there's two different ways to get your volume up, and I'm going to show you both ways. Uh, the first way is to find an exchange. So Google search base ecosystem, base ecosystem, and then click on that link that says that, and then just type in exchange. And we're going to use Jumper Exchange. Some exchanges like Wombat Exchange, um, for instance, is not available to people in the U.S. and certain other countries. Um, so that's good to know. But I know that Jumper Exchange does work. And so we are going to connect our wallet, our MetaMask wallet, to Jumper Exchange. Connect, connect. And so then what we do here is we connect, we select a chain, which is Ethereum, or no, the chain is base, sorry. The chain is base and the token is Ethereum. And we are going to swap that for base USDC. That way we don't lose any money. Um, and so then we're gonna hit max, which is the maximum amount that we can do. Um, and, uh, 
we're here at the Isla. I was telling us we don't have enough gas. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we are going to change this four to a three. If you get that message that you don't have enough gas, gas on base is so cheap that you can go several numbers back and just change it uh, one number down. It, it only changes it by like a penny or two and um, and then it still works. So then you hit that and you hit start swapping. Continue, we're gonna swap. Oh, JSON RPC error. So if you get that error, then you just try it again. That just means that there's something uh, with the RPC, but it's uh, it's always a temporary thing. Um, or it's usually a temporary thing. Okay, so that's not working very well. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to a different exchange because they're having some sort of issues with this exchange. So we're going to try the dip exchange. Actually, this doesn't look like it's an exchange. So, what we are going to do is we are going to go and we're going to type in DEX instead of exchange. Okay. And we're just going to use the OKX DEX. That's easy enough. Uh, we're going to connect our wallet, other wallet, hit other, hit MetaMask. I don't know why Jumper Exchange wasn't working, but for some reason it wasn't. So it is what it is. And then we're going to, so then you hit from, so that's right here, that's from, that's the chain you're going from. And you're going to hit base. That's the base symbol right there. You're going to hit Ethereum. And then you're going to hit base again. Because we don't want to do a cross chain swap. Um, and you hit USDC. And then we're going to go max again. Okay. 624. Okay, whatever. And then we're going to go swap. Confirm swap. So they're charging about a 12 cent fee in order to do this swap. Um, that's not bad. And then the transaction is done. So then all we do is hit do another swap. Switch that back from USDC to base ETH. First you approve the USDC. Hit, hit max here. Approve the USDC. All right, we gotta approve it again. So one sixty-two ninety is what we have. It's having some issues, so we're just gonna type in one sixty-two ninety. Sixty-two point nine zero. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna hit approve. Dead. And so now we're gonna hit swap. Confirm that swap. You hit. I want to proceed anyway. And it'll start going. Complete. Now we have a point. Six two. We got that ETH back again. Now we do another swap. Go there. 
Swap it again. Swap. Broadcast fail. Please try again. Update price. So sometimes the price will change mid swap, so you'll get one of those broadcast fail messages. Just wait for that update price message to come back, and then it'll update the price um, to what it to what it is. And then so do another swap. So I'm gonna come back here again, and we will approve USDC. Do one sixty-two oh four. So that's what we had. Um, then we're gonna hit approve. We're gonna delete this extra point five seven five. So now it confirms. So now we're gonna hit swap. And you're just going to keep doing this uh, about five or ten times. So, do another swap. It's still uh, confirming the other transactions. Okay, now we can do it. But we gotta wait for it to update the price first. Once again. And confirm, confirm. We'll just do this one more time and then I'll show you the other method uh, because but we want to get the USDC back into ETH again. So it's going to be 161.32. Approve USDC. One sixty one thirty two. Next, hit approve. Improving USDC failed. Okay, well, let's try it again. Sometimes it fails, so you just need to try it again. No big deal. Especially with gas as cheap as it is on base. It's not like Ethereum where a failed transaction can end up costing you a lot of money. Looks like MetaMask doesn't want to load right now, so redo it. 161.32. Next, approve. There we go. See the second time it confirms, so it's okay. It's not an exact science with this stuff, so sometimes you gotta do it a couple of times in order to get it to actually work. And so now it's back to ETH. And we barely spent any money. Um, let's see here. Our first one was 162.90 was our first swap. And right now we have 160. So that so those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six swaps costed about two dollars. Um, but let's go back to our tracker and let's see what that did to our tracker. So now we're in the top 11 percent, and we have point two of those six swaps equated into 0 0.209 ETH value. So um, top 11% is good, but we want to do even better. So what we're going to do is we're going to Google search base 
chain lending base chain lending and we are going to uh, let's see here Click on that, click on this D5 prime link, the top. So Google search will say best D5 lending crypto loans platforms, and then we'll hit base. So that gives us two options. That gives us the option of compound or Aave. Um, I'm just gonna choose compound for now. And then we'll go to app. And then we'll go connect wallet. MetaMask, connect, connect, canceling. So we are going to go base and go ETH. And so, um, yeah, so up here you go over to base and then you hit ETH, base ETH. Uh, and that's how we get to where we're at now. Now it shows our wallet balance. Otherwise, it's not going to show your wallet balance. So now what you're going to do is you're going to hit supply ETH. Oh, balance. Zero point. don't know why it's having an issue. It's showing the correct wallet balance, so... I don't know why it's having an issue. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna skip compound and we are just gonna to go to Abe. And we are going to connect wallet, browser wallet, MetaMask connect. Sometimes you just have to play around a little bit. Switch tokens. And so over here where it says uh, where the network is, we're going to go down to base and we're going to hit E. Actually, no, we're not. What we're going to do is we're going to switch to base USDC. Okay, let's we'll switch to USDC. Oh, it's telling me I don't have enough gas. So once again, just go over here and take that and switch that by one. So some of these lending platforms only let you, some of these lending platforms only let you use USDC, not ETH. I'm guessing that's the problem with this one. Hmm. JSON RPC error. Oh, of course. Let's see here. Let's give it a minute. And then we will... Actually, you know what? We're going to try to find a different lending protocol. We're going to try to find something different.
Seamless protocol. It looks like seamless protocol allows it, so let's Google search seamless protocol. Connect our wallet, browser wallet. There we go, connect. Okay. Okay, now we're somewhere where we can be. So this is where we want to be. Uh, see, so we want to go app seamless seamless protocol.com. We want to supply the ETH. We want to hit maximum. Maybe just be safe, we'll do this one under. And then we're going to hit supply ETH. Confirm. So we're supplying that ETH. Supplying the ETH counts once for value. And then what we're also going to do is we are going to borrow. Let's just borrow die. So we're going to borrow 127 die. We hit borrow, confirm. So we're borrowing that. And I'll put this app, I'll put this app, uh, in the uh, in the in the description as well for the YouTube video, so no worries about figuring this out. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna repay this, and because we uh, because we didn't take any time really. Oh, that so on this one, if you hit max, it works. Then we don't really pay any interest. We're going to hit repay. Confirm. And now we're repaying it. All right, and then we're going to withdraw the ETH that we have left. Draw yeah, as you can see, our balance just goes down by tiny amounts every time we do this. So you can do this over and over and over again uh, to get your wallet in even better of shape. But each time you do this process, it counts for three times as much. Uh, yeah, so remember we were at point uh point two zero nine or something like that in value now after just one time of doing that we are at point two seven four and we're at a top ten percent wallet so uh, 
it actually did not count. It did not count for as many times as it was supposed to. But going on. So yeah, uh, you can just continually do that if you want. Um, otherwise, we can go back to the exchange. Let's try jumper again. Let's see what this does. So once again, we're going to have to go ahead. This goes back back here. Okay, that failed again. So we are going to go back to base ecosystem and hit devs. And let's just try a different dex this time. Let's try Everdex. One check. Yes, it worked. And then we're going to go here and we're going to hit base Ethereum. And we're going to go USDC. And maybe this will, oh, and that says it's going to cost $4.50. So we're going to skip that dex, and we're going to go back to OKX dex. And we're just going to use this one again. So again, you go from base Ethereum to base USDC. And hit max. And go swap. Do another swap. And this time the max button is working, so you don't have to manually put it in, which is kind of nice. So then we, we're just going to keep. Uh, oh, wait. Actually, we just approved it. We didn't swap it yet. So we're going to confirm the swap. And we're going to do this. Let's say we do this ten times. Okay. Well, I guess on base, it doesn't really make sense to use the lending because it only counts it once. On most chains, it counts it for three different transactions for volume. Uh, swapping makes a whole lot more sense. Uh, if it since it only counts it once, uh, it would make sense if it counted it three times, like it does on most chains. But for some reason, it only counts it once. 
and you spend more in fees than you do just swapping back and forth. So you're just going to keep doing this over and over and over again. So I'm going to do this about 10 times and I'll be, then I'll come back. We're right back. So what I've done is I have basically swapped a bunch of times uh, ETH and USDC. Uh, as you can see, we still have 0.05493 ETH. Um, we started with 0.09 something. So uh, I spent about 0.04. Um, and let's just check where our wallet is at. This is our wallet. So find my score. Top 3%, number 72,233 out of 2,000,000. So uh, that is how you get a top 3% wallet with just 0.1 ETH, and you still have half of it left. Um, actually, 0.09 ETH closer to, and you still have more than half of it left. Now, here's a few things to keep in mind. Uh, you're going to want to do one random transaction. It can just be one swap or one uh, whatever. Um, but one random transaction every week or two until whenever they do the airdrop. Um, that's so that you consistently stay on the system. You're also going to want to always make sure that you have at least uh, 0.01 ETH in the wallet. So you can transfer some of this out. Um, once you get to where you want to be, you know, if you're, if you're aiming for the top 3%, then once you get there, you can transfer, you know, like 0.04 out maybe, um, uh, or 0.03 and, uh, and, and do that. But there is one thing to keep in mind when transferring out. If you're using one wallet, it doesn't matter. If you're using multiple wallets, you cannot transfer to the same wallet because if they see multiple wallets transferring to the same wallet, then they're going to assume that you're a bot and you know you're just transferring your central hub so um, if you're using multiple wallets you have to make sure that there's no connection between the wallets the wallets don't transfer between each other and that the wallets don't transfer to the same wa uh, end wallet so if it's one if it's an exchange wallet um, you can't have two wallets transfer the same exchange wallet otherwise you might run into issues and you might not get your airdrop because of it so um, just make sure that uh, you don't transfer in between wallets that, that, that you're trying to get the airdrop from, at least. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're not trying to get the airdrop from them. Um, and that you don't transfer uh, more than one wallet to uh, the same wallet. But if you follow these steps, um, once again, uh, I'll just go over them quickly. Uh, start off downloading MetaMask. You transfer uh, Ethereum from um, from your exchange to MetaMask. Now, one trick is you can transfer Ethereum in Arbitrum um, instead of the Ethereum main network, and the fees will be a, a bit less um, because Rhino, uh, the bridge, um, does support uh, Arbitrum Ethereum as well. So. Um, so yeah, you would just go if it, if you had Arbitrum Ethereum, then you would um, change this network to Arbitrum, and then you know you change you put this to base still, um, just like just like normal, and then ETH. But there is no Arbitrum ETH in there right now, so it's a zero. But if you wanted to say, save some fees transferring from the exchange, and your exchange gave you the ability to choose between Arbitrum ETH and regular ETH you could send Arbitrum ETH instead. So, um, so yeah, you download MetaMask, send ETH to your MetaMask, go to rhino.fi, um, which is this app, and uh, I'll put that in the comments. 
and then you uh, choose your networks. Um, if it's Ethereum mainnet, then it's Ethereum mainnet, and then you choose base, and then Ethereum, and then you hit max, and then uh, you would bridge it over. There'd be a bridge button down here, and then that, that would be there. So then the next step would be go to, go to the guide again in the comments and mint every one of these NFTs that gets your contract interactions up. And then from there, um, I would just recommend uh, to uh, skip half of half of what I was doing and just Google search base ecosystem. Base ecosystem. And then just type in DEX, D-E-X, and then just use OKX. OK you can try to play around with the other ones. You know, maybe they'll work for you a little better than they work for me. Um, but if not, um, then you can just use the OKX OK DEX. Um, you can also type in exchange and you can try uh, these other exchanges and see if maybe one of them will work um, better for you than it did for me. Uh, Oh, and then I also forgot uh, the other important step is to go to chainlist.org and to type in base and to add a chain, chain, the chain to your MetaMask. And if the first one doesn't work, then you just hit that button and you look for one that has uh, two greens and then you hit add to MetaMask on that one. And so... Um, yeah, that's really all you need, and that's how you turn uh, 0.1 ETH into likely ten to thirty thousand uh, dollars. Because uh, if it's anything like Arbitrum and Optimism, then uh, then this top three percent wallet, which will only get better if you do weekly transactions and keep going, um, then uh, that will uh, that'll equate to. Uh, Ten to thirty thousand dollars, which is anything like that. Our arbitrage or optimism. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, there is YouTube will not let me monetize my accounts. I do have uh, some uh, an Ethereum and a Bitcoin wallet in the comments. If you'd like to leave a tip, feel free. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, just enjoy your farming, and uh, I will catch you later.